गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज डॉक्टर राजकुमार आर्य एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिकल इंजीनियरिंग एन आई टी जलंधर टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन अनस्टडी फ्लो ओवर फ्लैट प्लेट ड्यू टू सडन मोशन सो इफ यू सी द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट सो द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इज कंसिडर ए बिस्कस न्यूट्रीनियल फ्लोइड ऑन टॉप of an infinite flat plate lying in the x z plane at y equal to 0 the fluid is at rest until time equal to 0 when the plate suddenly start moving at a speed u not in x directions full stop the gravity x in negative y direction determine the pressure and velocity fields so this is what is the plate is here so this is here the plate on top of that there is a fluid this plate moves in x direction with a constant velocity u not gravity x in negative y directions and uh, the thickness of this plate is infinity and the width of the plate is w that is very very large assumptions are the wall is infinite in x and uh, z directions thus nothing is uh, special about any particular x and z directions flow is parallel everywhere so v is equal to 0 third point the pressure constant with respect to x In other words there is no other applied pressure gradient pushing in x directions flow occurs due to viscous stress caused by moving plate fluid is in incompressible and newtonian with constant properties flow is laminar velocity flow field is two dimensional in x y plane w equal to 0 and del upon del z term is equal to 0 so by putting all these assumptions we can uh, the apply now x momentum balance so x momentum balance is given by this e equations here del u upon del x is being cancelled that we can fully doubled flow then v and uh, w are getting cancelled because no flow in uh, direction x and del u upon del z is also being zero because this dimension is very large equal to rho g x so g is not there because plate is horizontal del p upon del x is also not being applied del u upon del x is zero fully doubled flow then uh, then this one del u upon del z due to the large dimensions so this term is also getting cancel actually so we have here uh, that del u upon uh, del t equal to mu upon rho del square u upon del y square so del u upon del t equal to nu del square u upon del y square this is equation number 1 which need to be solved now by momentum balance we can write by momentum balance and uh, we can cal cancel the term here that if you want to calculate here uh, obviously we are solving it for steady flow so v is not zero because there no flow in direction y actually so all term will get cancel automatically so only thing you will have del p upon del y is rho g y so g y is minus g so p equal to rho g y plus a function of f time now z momentum balance if you see the z momentum balance is this all term will get cancel because w is not there because flow is totally in one dimensional is x only so del p z upon del z equal to 0 because this we also don't have so everything is zero so p is function of p z and t only 
so this is how the it will look like a case at t equal to 0 fluid is at rest so there is no velocity here now if you will start at t equal to 0 just as you are starting the moving of this flow this will start to move with some velocity u naught or b naught once the t equal to 0 fluid is unsteady state so this would be the situation at some particular time so this is the velocity at some particular time so the bottom fluid will have the highest velocity as you will move up inside the fluid velocity will keep on decreasing and decreasing and at the end of the fluid it would be zero so the initial conditions are at t less than or equal to zero velocity u is zero everywhere for all y in entire thickness of the fluid at y equal to zero u equal to u zero here velocity at all t at y equal to infinity that here u is it almost equal to zero for all t now we can non dimensionalize our equation that phi equal to u upon u naught then you can write del u upon del t equal to nu del square u upon del y square we can write del phi upon del t is nu del square phi upon del y square because uh, u is phi naught u naught phi into u naught then phi is a function of y phi at y at 0 at all t equal to 0 is 0 because velocity is 0 in the beginning then phi at y equal to 0 at all t equal to 1 because it will have velocity u at phi infinity this velocity is always 0 so these are the non-dimensional conditions for phi then seen initial and uh, initial <coughs> final boundary conditions contain only pure numbers and solution equation 3 has to be in the form of this phi equal to y t and nu since phi is dimensionless function the quantity phi y t and nu must always appear in dimensionless combinations so only dimensionless combinations for these quantities are so we can make dimensionless quantity y upon under root of nu t uh, so we can write here the phi is only function of eta where the eta is a function of y, nu, and t. And eta, we have considered that for new term for ease of the simplifications here. So, so now we can substitute here del phi upon del t. So, d phi upon d eta, del eta upon del t. So, this is the eta. So, all these three parameters has been coupled in one so this is the form of uh, del phi upon del t is coming finally here actually d phi upon d eta y upon under root of 4 nu plus 1 upon 2 t to the power minus 1 upon 2 minus 1 yeah it's minus actually so now the next part here so simplify this again with this so you'll get minus 1 by 2 d phi upon d eta eta by t actually now we find del phi upon del y is d phi upon d eta d eta upon dy so if we'll differentiate that we will end up with this d phi upon d eta equal to 1 upon of 4 uh, under root of 4 nu t double derivative of that differentiate of this del upon del 1 this differentiate del phi upon del eta upon 1 upon 4 nu t so this would become this 
del square phi upon del eta square then del eta upon del y multiply by this term so substituting that expression here this get del square phi upon del y square is 1 upon 4 nu t d square phi upon d eta square now e equation 3 is del phi upon del t equal to nu del square phi upon del y square substituting all these terms here so we are ending up d square phi upon d eta square plus 2 eta plus del phi d phi upon d eta equal to 0 now dimensionless boundary condition eta equal to 0 at phi equal to 1 eta equal to infinity at phi equal to 0 so we can find that uh, let's say d phi upon d eta equal to psi so we can write now d psi upon d eta plus 2 eta psi equal to 0 so we can say del d psi upon psi is minus 2 eta upon eta square so this we can integrate this put a ln term then we can put a log on both the terms here so finally we will end up this minus of eta square so that's psi equal to c1 exponential of minus eta square Now psi would be d psi upon d phi upon d eta the c1 exponential of minus eta square. So phi would be c1 integration of 0 to eta exponential minus eta square d eta bar plus c2. The choice of 0 for lower limit is arbitrary and other will lead to a difficult different form of c2. So, which is still undetermined. So, now we have phi equal to 1 and eta equal to 0. We can substitute into this. So, we'll get this. We'll get C2 equal to 1. That next boundary condition, phi equal to 0. Eta equal to infinity. So, we have 0 equal to C1, 0 to this. Exponential of minus eta square upon d eta plus 1. So this we can write C1 here uh, under root pi by 2 plus 1 equal to 0. So this is infinite term so we can write it here in terms of the average of the eta also eta square by 2. So this is 0 to infinity exponential minus eta square by 2 d eta equal to under root pi by 2. So C1 is minus 2 under root 2 by root pi so we can write that phi is equal to that uh, c1 exponential c1 integration of 0 to eta exponential minus eta square upon 2 d eta plus c2 now this is the expression of phi so we can write this then we substitute it here that 1 minus 2 upon under root pi 0 to eta exponential minus eta square by 2 d eta so this is known as the error functions so phi is 1 minus of error function of eta then we can substitute what phi is u upon u naught 1 minus error function of eta that y upon under root of 4 nu t so this complete this totally not complementary error function y upon under root of 4 nu t so complementary error function is a monotone decreasing function that goes from 1 to 0 and drops to 0 0.01 when eta tends to 2 so we can use this fact to define a boundary layer thickness delta as that distance y for which u has dropped to a value 0 0.01 u naught this gives the delta equal to 4 nu t delta equal to 4 nu t as a natural length of diffusion momentum 
This distance is measure of extent by which movement has penetrated into the body of the fluid. Thus, boundary layer thickness is proportional to the square root of the elapsed time. So, I hope that we will understand people might have understand that this is comes to point zero 0.01 when eta is equal to 2 so this is uh, as per boundary layer theory the definitions with the distance by which velocity drops to point zero 0.01 times of original velocity is treated as boundary layer thickness so delta is uh, actually 4 under root of nu 2 Thank you.